Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. I'm really happy to have you here with us today. Today we are going to get all Christmassy. We have started adding our ornaments. We have our stockings up and our Christmas village. And now we are going to decorate the tree that we went and got the other day. We had so much fun going out, even though it was negative 20 degrees Celsius, we bundled up really well and found the perfect tree. Hey mom, we should sprinkle the pine cones to sparkle dust. In BC, you can get a Christmas tree permit, which allows you to take trees from roadways or under power lines anywhere where they would have to cut them down anyway. So we got this beautiful pine tree here. This is the first year we have ever done a pine Christmas tree. You can see this is a lodgepole pine has really long needles on it. Normally we get fir trees, but um, Dan and Oliver both really wanted a pine tree this year, so we did it and I absolutely love it and I don't know that we'll ever go back. So we got all the Christmas lights put on last night, but we are going to get it all decorated up today. We're also going to do some Christmas baking and I'm not sure what else we're going to get up to, but I thought it would be fun to bring you along with us. But before we get into that, my youngest wanted to show you the painting that she did this morning. That is an absolutely beautiful painting. Well done. Mm. I agree with you. I think that is your best one yet. Okay, are you guys ready? Yep. Okay, we're gonna decorate. We can fix any of the ones that we need to fix. Okay, I'll pass this around to you and then we'll run it up to the very top. This is Pinky the Elf. Wait, which one is it? That one. Oh, who's this one? Um, here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's a Christmas tree. Those ones are heavy, aren't they? Oh, beautiful. I think this is going to be our most festive looking tree ever. Hey. Oh, sorry. Dan puts the Christmas star on the top of the tree, so we'll wait till he comes back in. I don't want to snap the string because the string's a Gwenny, is that one yours? Mm -hmm. Oh, that one's beautiful. Mm -hmm. that one's like these ones were sent to me from Serena from You Can't Eat the Grass, and she does sell these, and I'll put a link to them down in the description box below. It looks so pretty, I love it. This, every single year, it's kind of tradition for me to say that this is my favorite Christmas tree because I say it every year, but I think this actually is my favorite Christmas tree. I love it. So these ornaments in this box, these stay in this box until my adult kids come home at Christmas and then they hang those on the tree. So we'll put these back in here. Now let's go bake some cookies. We are going to make one of my very favorite Christmas cookies today. They're called radio cookies and I have never had a Christmas without them. So we'll make them and then I'll share the recipe with you. They're so good. This recipe that we're going to make are a type of thumbprint cookie. And we have always called them radio cookies my entire life because my grandmother, who we got the recipe from, she got the recipe from listening to a radio show and she didn't catch the name of the cookies themselves. So she always called them radio cookies. And when my parents got married and she was teaching my mom how to cook, she taught her this recipe. So we still to this day have no idea what the original recipe was called, but to us, they will always be radio cookies. Very simple recipe. Absolutely absolutely delicious. So I'm going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. I have my cookie sheets waiting over here. We don't need to grease them because these cookies, like most cookies, have a lot of butter in them. So they don't require greasing. And even though I have made these cookies every single year for a very long time, I still always have to look at the recipe. I do have this recipe linked over on my website, so I'll put a link for it directly down in the show notes for you. I am going to double this recipe today, so you need one cup of butter. And a little bit earlier, I made some raspberry jam. The raspberry jam that I made over the summer, I don't use a ton of sugar in my jam, so it's a little bit runny, but you need a thick jam for this. All I did to make this was I used some raspberries and sugar, 
cooked it up still till it started to thicken and then just put it outside to cool. So we'll use that as the filling for our cookies. So we're going to need two cups of brown sugar. So this is a cookie. There's nothing healthy about these cookies at all, but they sure are delicious. And we're gonna have to run down to the pantry and fill up our brown sugar. So we wanna beat this together until it's light and fluffy. Four eggs. Four teaspoons of vanilla, give or take. Four teaspoons of baking powder. and smooth. Okay, now we're gonna take some of our dough and you want about the size of a walnut, not quite that big, that's a little bit too big. Don't skimp on the vanilla with these because the vanilla flavor is really what makes these cookies. They don't spread that much, so you can put them a little bit closer together than you would, say, a chocolate chip cookie. Now we put a thumb print in, and if your finger's sticking a little bit, you can just dip it in some flour. This is just the most nostalgic cookie for me ever. Oh, that's so cute. I love it. She really wants Is that for your bedside table? Little, Your own little Christmas tree? Where are you going to put it? Well, yeah. I have a little Christmas tree for um, I think I was just asking my youngest if she wants to make some dough ornaments, and she said yes, and then everyone else piped up and said they wanted to too. So I'm going to make up a batch of dough that you can bake in the oven. I'm going to use a salt dough recipe to make these and it is super simple. Four cups of flour and I like to use my mixer for making dough like this. It's, nice, it's easier to get it nice and smooth. One cup of salt. One and a half cups of water. Okay, I'm gonna try a trick that many of you have shared with me, and that's to take your parchment paper, crinkle it up, and then apparently when you spread it out, you can get it to lie flat. Oh, you guys are brilliant. Oh yeah, look at that perfection. That's fantastic. That's it's such a good trick. <laughs> Our cookies are looking a little worse for wear. Because the jam wasn't quite thick enough, it's kind of spread out a little bit on the cookies, but they're still gonna taste good. Okay, so we have our salt dough here. I'm just going to roll it out between this parchment paper. And you could absolutely use whatever your favorite jam or whatever else you'd like to fill these with. Now we'll get our next batch going. This has just been sliding around too much. Christmas. Hmm. It does look perfect. I love it. What a cheerful Christmas tree.
We are now on to day two. Yesterday afternoon, we went to one of my girls' dance recitals in town, ran some errands. We didn't get home until seven o'clock last night. So now what I am doing is getting my weekly bread made. This is going to make five loaves of bread. Just finished proofing it. And then I am going to make some savory crepes for lunch. And I thought I would show you how to do that because it's super easy and absolutely delicious. So first things first though, let's get this bread doing its second rise. No matter how many times I make bread, I always end up with one extra large loaf and one really small one every time without fail. So we'll pop these back in the oven for their second rise. Where did I put my down tea towel? There it is. Next up is our crepe recipe. So I'll put the base recipe down below, but you can use any crepe recipe for this you like. So we have water and milk, and this is the first time in probably, I wanna say four, maybe even five years that we have had to buy milk, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Crepes are basically just, whoops, water, milk, salt, eggs, and flour. I always make my crepes in the blender super fast and make sure that they're nice and smooth. Oh, we also need melted butter in here as well. You don't need the melted butter, but it does make the flavor nicer. Okay, so here's the situation with the milk cows. Normally I have a couple of milk cows and I breed them so that I have milk year round and that's been working really well for me for probably four to five years. But this year I had a cow lose a calf in the spring. So I was milking her morning and night and I decided that when my next cow had her calf back in August, I think it was, that I would just keep the calf on her because I was getting more than enough milk from the milk cow that I had in milk. And what I thought that I would do is when I had to dry off, so that means to stop milking, the cow that I was currently milking, who was due to calf at the end of February, when I would dry her off, I would just start milking the other cow. That's what I thought, that was my whole plan. So I started to dry fireweed off last week, brought Amber in, the cow that calved in August, and started uh, milking her. So I, would, I separated her from her calf at night and brought her into the milk stanchion in the morning. This is the first time I've ever done this where I haven't started milking right after they've calved. So this is mid lactation and she is not letting down for me. So that means she's holding her milk up and she won't let it down for me. That's obviously causing an issue because I'm not getting enough milk out of her and it's been so cold for the last week that I haven't had the patience or the endurance to sit out and milk her for long enough to actually get her to milk down or to let down rather, hence the store-bought milk. And when Dan went and bought this milk, he was like, we have got to figure out a way to get that cow to let down because for organic milk at a grocery store, I think it's $10 a gallon and we use a gallon of milk a day. So that's obviously not very sustainable for us, especially having a milk cow, it doesn't even make sense. So we are going to get our milk machine running. Normally I milk by hand and we will use our milk machine and then I'll be able to get her to let down with that. So anyways, yes, that is the Milk Sega and that is why we have store-bought milk, which is just insanely expensive. So now we are going to use the cook stove. I have my pans over there heating up right now to cook these crepes. So I'm gonna grab a, I guess we'll do a plate to put the cooked crepes on. Thank you. 
my goodness, I'm getting warm already. So to make our cheese sauce, I'm going to make a roux using flour and some butter. And then I'll be adding milk to this and then some grated cheese. Um, you can also make these a sweet crepe, which we do sometimes with whipping cream and strawberries. That's one of our favorite ways to do it. The nice thing about this recipe is it comes together really quickly and because these are such a thin pancake, they, uh, they don't take long to cook. Now our sauce is thickening up. I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic powder, some mustard powder, a pinch of cayenne pepper, and a little bit of salt and pepper. And going to steam a bunch of corn. I've decided to throw corn in here too. And I'll assemble this over in the kitchen. Okay, so we have our cheese sauce over here. Going to add broccoli and cauliflower to the cheese sauce. going to add my steamed corn into the cheese sauce with all the broccoli and cauliflower. I blanched the broccoli and cauliflower or I over blanched it when I froze it so it was pretty much cooked all the way through anyway. Okay so to make these super simple just take some filling and wrap. little pinch of smoked paprika. And then once the bread is out of the oven, we'll pop these in at 350 until they're bubbly. Oh, this looks so good. Doesn't that look good? It smells good. It smells delicious. And we have our bread is all done as well. So now I'm just gonna let that cool off and then we'll get it all served up for lunch. But before we sign off on today's video, I'll show you the Christmas tree because I just realized I didn't actually give you an overview of it when we finished decorating it yesterday. So here we have our finished tree. This is one of the ornaments that one of my daughters made yesterday and I thought that was so creative. I love it. And there is another one. And these are some of the ones from past years. This little cutie, I love that one. Little walnut reindeer. When did we do these ones? Last year. Was it? All right, my friends, that is it for us today. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.